Professor, could you could you go through the the, the slide seven? Just I, I think it's more about the term like physical ring uh, terms like that that gives me such such like a hard time to fix in my mind. Have we have we talked? Have we gotten to that point yet? Uh, I think we mentioned something. We we gave some. Uh, what page are you talking about? What page is that on? Let me just see where <clears throat> I took an open one. I think we, we mentioned something. Where did I put that? What page is that on? Uh, I actually, I was looking at the, I think I actually, I was looking at the slide 17, but I, but I- the Slide what? I was looking at the slide 17, but it's totally fine. I don't 17? Know. Yeah, but I think you- Well, I, I don't think we're, are we there yet? Did you say phys physical ring? <laughs> yes. That's fine. Don't worry. We're not. We haven't reached there yet. Uh, the first uh, topology we're looking at is the physical bus, and we just kind of got to the end of physical bus, talking about terminator signal bounds. So the next one now is the physical um, star, physical star. All right. All right. So physical star. Uh, let me look. Let me sh let's look at the diagram here. Now, when you look at the diagram of physical star, you can tell that it is the diagram of a switch. You've got all the computers connected directly to that device in a kind of a star shape. So you can tell that that's a, that's a physical star topology. All the benefits and maybe disadvantages of using a switch are going to be uh, tied to the physical star topology. Topology. <clears throat> Excuse me, give me a second. Yeah, all the benefits and disadvantages of physical star are going to be, you know, present in the physical star topology. So let's see. Um, it's, it says it's much faster technology than a physical boss topology, centralized monitoring and management of network traffic. So centralized, what does that mean? When we look at this diagram here, what does that mean centralized? Centralized monitoring. Summer, let me go back to you. How is this, what is, how do you understand that? Summer, are you still there? Oh, sorry. It's basically kind of like the router going to every, every computer, giving them the network from different locations. The what? Is, or the switch, sorry. So say that again. Just say that again. The switch is giving like internet to all the computers on the network. Well, how is that? How is that centralized monitoring? We're talking about the advantages, right? So yeah. what does that mean by centralized monitoring? It like speeds up the traffic because you can monitor it. Okay, so you can actually monitor it, right? Yeah. Uh, centralized, centralized. How about centralized? It's in the center. <laughs> in the center? Yeah. Well, I like that. It is in the center. Basically, um, when you talk about centralized, I think uh, the word we can use this technology term here, and that is, um, well, I'll come to that term later, but centralized, so you look at this diagram here, all the computers are connected to that device uh, right there in the center, in the middle, right there, connected to it. Um, so 
if you all right, summer, if you pull out, say you pull out this computer, maybe you disconnect it or something happens to this computer. What happens to the other five computers? They would get faster, most likely. They'll get what? Faster. Why would they be faster? You're talking about a switch. If this computer went down, will all the other computers go down? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Okay, so I want to know why you're like, you know, on the fence. Why are you on the fence? What when we talk about hubs and switches, there's major differences somewhere. Major differences. So with a switch, everything is connected to the switch. If you pull one cable out or one computer out, does it affect all the other computers? I'm not sure. Okay, I'd rather tell us about that. Sure. If you pull off one computer or one computer is down, does it affect the other guys? So in the previous class, we talked about physical bus topology, which we use the Daisy Chain fashion example and the limitations as example that the Daisy Chain, if we took one computer there, it affected the whole network. That brings down the that's, this, this, that's this picture here, right? Correct. So one of the limitations that I mentioned, uh, we have a limitation number of computers that we can put there. We have uh, also uh, the cable issue. We also, if you want to take one computer uh, or a problem in the cable, it affects the whole network. The difference between the, the, the star topology, we can take any computer and would not affect our network at all. Um, uh, that's explained why you're saying it's faster but uh, definitely comparing to the bus topology, I think uh, we will not have the same issues. We, we can have maybe more computers. We, we don't need all the cable. And also if we remove a computer, it will not affect the network. Okay. So Summer, back to you. So based on what Eduardo just said, you're talking about two different topologies here. This is your star, right? And here is your bus topology. If you're the IT person at your job, Summer, yeah. and somebody says, um, you know, you have somebody who works with you whose name is Mark, and Mark says, hey, Summer, can you fix my computer? While you're fixing Mark's computer, it's, I mean, does the whole office shut down? Like everyone stops working? No. Exactly. That's your start topology. One person being down doesn't affect the others. But if it was the if it was the boss topology like this, well, if you took out one person, the whole thing is down. Yeah. So so don't mix up don't mix up the uh, topologies. Boss is where you have pro major problems. Star, you have very little problems. That's why we said centralized, right? They're all connected individually to one device, if you pull one connection off, it, it doesn't affect everything, right? It doesn't affect everything. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, in a, if I use a funny example, imagine if, um, you know, you switch off your TV at home and, and, and all, your, all your neighbors, the TVs went off. Like, it was all dependent on everybody watching at the same time. If anybody switched off their TV, everything went off. You can imagine how crazy that was going to be, right? Yeah. So that is the, that's what we can call the old technology, so to speak, right? Where they're all connected, one person is down, everyone is down. That's the boss topology. But right now, this is like the current standard. The boss topology is like, so to speak, history. This is the current technology where all the computers are connected. So that's what we mean there. All right, let's see, uh, let's see the other part here. So easier network upgrades. So um, question for you, Freddie. So now we have six computers in this office going by this picture, right? Six computers. Say you have two, two new, and, and let's also assume that this switch has six ports. 
So six computers, six ports, no more space, right? So you hire two new employees. And they need to be on the network. What are you going to do, Freddie? Uh, I can introduce a second switch, daisy chain the two switches together. All right, you don't do what the other guy said. The other guy said, just fire two people. <laughs> True. That's option number two. <laughs> Every time you want to hire a new person, you got to fire somebody. You say, which of you guys volunteers to be fired so we can hire somebody else, right? Um, so, yeah. You simply... You simply upgrade the network. You upgrade the device. In fact, it says it here on the next page, right? It says, um, when the number of, of workstations, that's computers, exceed the number of ports, that's you have a lot of computers, you don't have enough ports, you simply add another central device. Okay, now let's, before we go too far, let's look at something else here. Let's see what may be a disadvantage here. Maybe disadvantage, right? Shenhui, let's go to you. So looking at this picture here, what do you think is the disadvantage of this physical star topology? Uh, physical topology? Can you say that again? Is it, you're saying it's a physical pathology, pathology? What is the disadvantage? Looking at, can you see my screen? Uh, yeah, I can see your screen. Uh, you know what, we're, you, you're listening to what we're talking about, right? Yeah. So what's the disadvantage? What would be a problem in this kind of a setup? Uh, what is potentially going to be a problem? I don't know. I just know switch. So the switch is better than the hub. It is. But looking at this, just going with this picture that we're seeing here, mm -hmm. can you tell what may be one or two problems that are obvious to you? Oh, a uh, 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 switch can only accept one uh, one destination, like uh, to process the information, right? Like it can it cannot go parallel. Shen, you're sounding like you're a bit confused between the switch and the hub. You're mixing everything now. A uh, little bit. Okay, let's go to Winston. Let's get let's let's talk about this a little bit more. What would be a disadvantage? Just looking at this picture, what you know, what do you think may be a problem? They all have to be close together. What has to be close together? I think all all the computers might have to be like close to the switch. Well, of course, they have to be close to the switch. Is that a problem? Um, yeah. What if like you wanted more computers in like a different room? Great question. So what would you do? That's actually the question. I'm asking. I'm, well, I was going to ask that question later, but since you brought it up, what would you do if you had more computers? And let's say there was a computer in, you know, some other room or, you know, the next building. What would you do? I thought we were supposed to add like another switch. Yes, you add another switch. But you're not telling me problems. I mean, you mentioned one. I don't know if that's a problem. Um, you know, they have to be close together. I mean, anything you're setting up, there has to be a certain level of proximity. But problems. What any obvious problems that anyone sees? Pratik, what do you think? Um, if the switch doesn't operate properly, everything's not gonna work. Say it again. If the switch doesn't like operate properly, or something happens to the switch, none of the computer will be able to connect. If something goes wrong with the switch, yeah, none of those guys can connect. Sindhu, do you? Is that what do you think about that? Do you see that as a problem? Yeah. Yeah, what? Yeah, I see as a problem. Okay. So how do we solve that kind of a problem, Josh? If they're saying 
the switch goes bad, everything comes down. Well, how do we solve that kind of problem? You just uh, carry another spare switch. Okay. So, so what you just talked about now, uh, what the switch being like, you know, pot you know, potentially the switch goes down. We call that a single, the technical definition, I guess, single point of failure. A single point of failure. That is, you're all connected to one device. Something goes to that single device or that singular device, and, every, and the whole system comes down. Right? That may be a problem, but, you know, um, as Jeff said, what's the solution to that? And he says it right here. Uh, he says, you simply add another central device. Right? If your switch goes down, you add another device. Now, the question is, if the switch goes down, where are we going to get a new device from? Michael, Tajali. I mean, everyone is working, everything is going on, boom, 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 and suddenly everything goes down. Where are we going to get a switch from? You can buy it, I guess. Say it again? You can buy it online. You're going to buy it online, Michael? Yeah, a new one. <laughs> remember, what, remember what we just said? Everyone is working, everything is going on fine, and suddenly everyone's computer just shuts down. And someone says, oh, I hear from IT that the switch is down. So you're going to go online? How long is it going to take to get to your office? Do they do deliveries in like 10 minutes online, Michael? No. So what are you going to do? Uh, use a Seriously, this is a serious have... question. All right, use a spare one if you have, if you have any. Okay, well, that's a, good, that's a good point. Now, you're supposed to have spare switches, right? You're supposed to have spare switches. We, in fact, we call that there's a word for that, I think, and the word is the word redundancy. Redundancy, right? Oh, did I spell that right? Redundancy. Yeah. Professor, um, Professor just a question. The definition you put there, a single point of failure, uh, is the referring to when I have only one switch? That is when you have... When you have, it's not just it's not just for the switch. It's actually something that happens like in everyday life, right? Yeah. Sort of when um, when let me say when a lot depends on, um, you know, what for example when a lot of people when a lot of people depend on one service or person. So let's say you go to, I don't know, where do you go to shop? You go to where? You go to Walmart or you go to Marshalls or somewhere to buy stuff. And you have only one person checking out everybody, you know, the cashier checking out everybody, just one person. Have you guys experienced that before? You have only one person checking everybody out. Now, what happens if that person says, ah, oh, sorry, guys, i got to go to the bathroom? <laughs> what happens? I get it. Everyone has to wait, and everyone's going to complain and complain and grumble and grumble and wait and wait and wait. That's a single point of failure. Everyone depends on one person. How about if you want to travel? You know, you want to travel wherever, you know? And the airport, there's only one flight for the day, just one single flight that's going to go to New York, one flight. And of course, we know what happens, right? There's, there's an engine failure or, you know, they have to walk on the plane. What happens? You can't go anywhere. You're depending on one thing. So the same thing in this scenario here, you have all six computers depending on one switch or as many computers as can fit into the switch. 
single point of failure. If one, if that one single device goes down, it affects. Um, so it's just a. It's not just a technology term or definition. It happens in life. You know, it's like your car. If you have a car and that's the only car you have, well, that car better be working every day <laughs> because it's like your whole family is going to be in trouble if that car doesn't work. Single point of failure. All right. So that's what it is. So redundancy here. Redundancy is when you create. Who knows what that word is? Redundancy. Uh, who has will? Have you? You know what that word means? Um, I know that in the context of like a redundancy protocol, you just have like a backup for everything, and then like a backup for the backup, and then a backup. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's exactly what it is. You have a backup and then you have a backup for the backup and then you have a backup for the backup for the backup. They have the backup for the, for the, for backup for, for I'm trying to write a bit, bit faster. Yeah. Backup for the backup, backup for the backup for the backup. That's exactly what it is. So why do we need, a, why do we need redundancy will? I mean, why is it a, like, is it, is it in a thing? Case one of them Go ahead. stops working, you're only like halt for a few minutes while someone runs to the closet to get the new switch. Or like in the case of what we said, going to Marshalls to buy stuff, right? If you have another employee on standby, yeah, like an assistant, the time to like switch the employees that is downtime rather than an extended period. Exactly. Because uh, this guy can say, I got to go to the bathroom and happens to be there for the next, who knows, right? And it's like, what? We got to wait? That's going to be, you know, the whole total disaster that day. So, um, yeah, so you have somebody else, you know, you bring somebody else in and it's not a problem. So redundancy is an idea in technology or in life, again, you know, where you create. Ba now, if you work in HR, HR, they don't like the word redundancy because in HR, human resources, redundancy means you've got staff who are doing nothing, <laughs> you know, it's like, we have too many employees here, you know, we, do, we need to get some, you know, just, you know, we just need to reduce our staff numbers. So in HR terms, not a good thing, but in computer and technology terms and some other services, you absolutely want to create redundancy, you know, so you have extras and backups and stuff like that. Okay, just, you know, you want to, reduce or totally get rid of any downtime. Okay, so talking about switches, uh, so you guys are saying, well, we need to have an extra switch and stuff like that. How many computers, Vincent, can we connect to a switch? Do you know, is there a standard size or something? Or a standard kind of a switch and how many computers? Is it like dirty? I believe sometimes. I, I know the switches come into many different sizes, but I think dirty might be the maximum you got. Okay, where do you get that information from? You just I'm think so, or you see it somewhere? I'm taking a guess right now. So why don't you just guess like 28 or 32? You're just 30, right? That's your best guess. Yeah. All right, so let's see. So that, well, let's check out your guess here. So let's go to got too many tabs open here let me get rid of this tab here get this out of the way all right so what are we looking for switches network switches network switch ports so let's see what we got here uh let's go to images and let's go to go away Let's cut this guy here. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. All right, so here's one. Yep. So take a look at this, Vincent. How many ports do you see here? He says 48. 
So the last time I checked, this is the um, this is the most you can get from any switch. Right. So how many computers can you connect to the switch? Forty-eight then. For, Forty-eight exactly. How about how many switches can you daisy chain to this switch? Uh, can you tell? Uh, hmm. So you see this ports to the, I think it's the ports to the left or to the right. Right. I'm not, I'm not seeing the uh, description very well, but they kind of look like that. Maybe like the ones to the left. You can daisy chain them to other switches. So this might be two. It says a, a 10 by 100 megabit Ethernet. So, so well, one of, okay. Well, one of the one of the ports has to be connected to the internet, right? Like to your network. Um, then I think maybe the guys to the right. I'm not so sure from this, you know, from what I'm seeing here. But one of these guys. In fact, sometimes you can use one of the 48 switches. I mean, one of the 48 ports, right? Because all you need is a, you know, an actual cable, just going to the other cable. That's all it is. So you can use one of the existing ports there. All right. right. Um, and well, let's keep going. Well, we'll get some of the other points now. So 48 uh, is like the max uh, that you can have. And of course, if you had more than that or more staff and employees and computers, then you would just stack them on top of each other. Um, so I asked us to, well, in that video, I mentioned watching, uh, I mean, the recording, I mentioned watching a YouTube video. Did anybody check it out? Because that is an opportunity for you to get extra credit. So did anybody watch that, watch that YouTube video? Is that the Google, the Google one or my, in the server? Yes. Did anybody watch it? Yes. You watched it? I did. Okay. Who else watched it? So if you watched it, um, I'm about to hand out and uh, give you a 25 points extra credit just by you telling me you watched it. I believe you. So 25 points extra credit. You can add it to any assignment you want. So uh, Google Data Center. All right, we're going to come back to this in a second. Um, all right, so who else watched the, the YouTube video? I did, Eduardo. Yeah, you said that already. I don't know who else watched it. Azim, did you watch it? No. Did you hear in that lecture where I said to go watch it? Azim. Uh, no. no, I didn't. Did you listen to the lecture? Yeah. I don't remember. But you didn't hear the part. I had to watch it. You didn't hear. Say it again? I didn't hear the part where you said to watch a video. But you watched but you watched the whole recording from the from the start to the end. Yeah. Did you answer the uh, attendance questions? Yeah. You got everything right? Yes. And somehow you didn't hear, okay, I want to be sure I said it because I think I did. Dev, did you hear that part to watch this video? Yeah, I heard the part, but like I haven't watched the video yet. Okay, so why not? Um, when were you planning to watch it? I mean, I was going to watch it, but I said that's later. So. so do you have a plan to watch? Are you just like, oh, you know, whatever. I'll take care of it later. Later, maybe like next year. No, I will watch it like today. Okay. So let's go back to the, uh, we're going to come back to this video. There's some things that we should talk about. Uh, let's just keep going here. All right. So the Fisgo star. Like we said, uh, you need uh, you you need to have redundancy 
it's a it's a great idea for IT people to have backups and extras in the closet somewhere. A device goes down, you just simply put another one there, and you know the work goes on. Uh, also, this part here, I think someone mentioned this when we when I asked the question about collecting statistics, information, network traffic patterns. These devices have the ability, right, to record information. So you want to know what computers, you know, made connected through the switch within a certain amount of time. You can use these devices to monitor your traffic. That's what they do. They read the data. These devices, routers, switches, they read the data, look at the IP, or look at the MAC address, look at the port numbers, and can tell you some kind of patterns. If you want to know who connected between the hours of 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock, or, you know, a whole bunch of things you might want to know. All right, uh, let's go. Okay, now, so, like it says here, or just like we said, when you have, you know, a lot of computers, a lot of users, a lot of switches, now you have to daisy chain the switches together. And you now have a bigger physical star topology, which is now called an extended star topology. So basically you are extending the star into a way that it's much bigger. So I think Winston or Will, the question you had about um, so how do we expand the network? I think it was stuff, stuff like that. Well, your, your, your office building or office complex can be as large as possible. Doesn't matter. You always have devices. You can have a device in this room. You can have a device in three rooms down from there, right? That are connected together. That's how you keep the con connection going. So in this drawing, it doesn't mean that these computers are like physically together or close in proximity. The idea is that you have switches that are somehow able to, so you have a, a cord or a cable, right, with the appropriate length to connect from one switch to the other switch to the other switch to keep the connection going. How do you run switches through an office building? Sasha, how do you run uh, how do you run cables? Let's say this was an office building, right? And we could get up to you know see through the walls and everything. How how would you run cables to the office building? Sasha, can you hear me? Yes. So what do you think? Did you hear the question, Sasha? Um, how do I run the cable? Yeah. If this is an actual office building, and we had all these switches around the whole, you know, different floors of the building, how would you get the cables from one floor to the other to connect the switches? Are you going to respond or should we just wait, Sasha? Um, I, I don't know. All right, if you don't know, you just say, I don't know. Because when, you, when, you, when you're quiet, then we think, okay, maybe we need to give you a minute to think about it. All right, so are you at home right now? Yes. Do you have electricity at home? Yes. Where are all the cables that make the electricity in your house? possible. Where are the cables? Do you see the cables? Do you see the cables? Like when you go to your room, do you see cables on the wall that bring in electricity? Right. Um, 
Charger. Not the charger. I'm not asking you. To, I'm not. I'm not talking about charging your phone. Okay. There's a there's a switch on the wall. If you want to like switch on the light, switch it on. Put switch it off. Right. There's a switch on the wall. You yeah. see the switches? Maybe somewhere in the room there. Yes. Okay. Do you see the Do you see the cables that bring light to that switch? That bring the signals to that switch? Do you no. see the cables on the wall? No. So you can assume that the cables are where. Are there any cables at all? Do you think? Um. Sasha, is this a very confusing question that I'm asking, or you don't understand my question at all? I'm I'm confused. Okay, uh, Summer, help me out here. Do you understand the question I'm trying to ask here? Yeah, about the, cables and stuff. The cables and wires are all in the walls, right? All right. So explain to uh, Sasha what we're trying to find out here. Like we're trying to find out where all the wires and like the power goes and you don't see yeah them. yeah okay. uh, exactly you don't see them so where are they at where's first of all how does power flow through your house right they're physical cables that are where i think you just said it's summer in the walls are they in the walls yeah i think so. sasha Sasha, are the cables in the walls in your house? Yes. At least you you believe you you think they are because you don't see them. And when you go and switch, you know, you go to that light switch and you flick it on, light just shows up. You know, the bulb comes on, turns on. Josh, where are the cables? Some are right, are they in the walls or are they just like who knows? They're just kind of invisible. Yeah, Maybe they're no they cable. Connect. They connect from your house to your your uh, telephone pole. Okay. Well, I have an assignment for you guys. I can't believe I'm going to say this. Oh. Go and find out where the cables are in your house. Get a hammer and tell your tell your tell your father or your friend. I need to break down the wall to see where the cable is and take a picture. <laughs> uh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, professor, well, I think I have a good way of explaining it, kind of. It's like, say it again. I think I, I think I find, I think I, I think I know a simple way to, of explaining it of where you get. Sure, electric. go ahead. So, like, yep. you have a phone, right? And it, where your phone is, there's like a charging plug, and the charging plug is connected to the the block, right? And then you plug the block into like an outlet. So, say like you have it's connected to somewhere else. You can base, there's a wire where the outlet is and you just like follow the wire into the wall. Normally, normally the outlet's on the wall. So then if you plug in it onto the wall, you know that the electricity, there are, there are wires behind the wall. So, you know, electricity is coming through the wall, basically. So I have a picture to help you with your, with your explanation. So keep going. Right, right. So like, so you see the outlet, you see the wall outlet and you see the thing you're holding and say that that's that that thing you're holding is what gives power what's charging your laptop so you know that if you plug it in power is going to your laptop right so now you're just wondering where does the power come from to the outlet and if you look around the outlet you don't see any wires so and if you go behind the wall there's probably nothing so it's, the most logical answer is probably it's somewhere inside the wall which probably flows throughout your house so Vincent, don't you agree with me that we should all find out where the cables are, right? Yeah. Get a funny. hammer <laughs> and break down the wall. <laughs> of course. Just, right. You know, just give, like, give you give the wall a nice pack. Give it like a. Like, one, and your dad says, "What are you doing?" You know, my professor says we have to find out what's in the wall. So I got to break the wall down, <laughs> and then I'm gonna everyone's gonna come to my house and say, "We need to see who that professor is," <laughs> right? 
Uh, like I said, don't do that. <laughs> you know? So basically, you can rightly, because how does electricity come to this outlet here? Well, it comes through actual wires and cables that are in the wall. So same thing with switches. Let me go back to switches, right? You have to somehow, through walls, now sometimes actually, to be honest, if you, if you have, maybe your house is kind of old, uh, maybe you, you know, the house was built a long time ago, sometimes you have to run the, you run the uh, electricity cables right like, literally on the wall because there's just no way of, you know, there's no way of creating, you know, some extra fixture. So you have to just put it directly on the wall and try to make it look nice. Um, like, let's see if we can find a picture of something running down the wall. You guys know what I mean, but let's see. I mean, maybe we're not going to see any here. Uh, well, no. Well, you guys know what I mean. When the cables are actually on the wall. Let me do a better search here. Maybe we'll get something. Just to give you guys that picture here. Uh, let me see. All right, so here's this. Okay, here's this. Well, we'll probably get another one here. Uh, where, where, where? If you look up uh, wiring on a concrete wall, I think you get what you're looking for. Oh, concrete. Well, I just spelled that way. Okay, well, you guys get. All right, that's it. Something like that. So, yeah. All right, so if you look at this picture here, well, this is, yep. Like, if you go to your basement, you are probably are going to see some cables hanging around, something like this, you know? Like, in your basement, you may see some cables. Depending on how, you know, how the house was set up and stuff like that, uh, you have this cable running on the wall, and it maybe it goes, to, it goes to an outlet down here. You can see that, right? Um, but somehow, whatever you do, in a safe way, Switches need to be connected together, right? Um, and if the building is a new building, of course, it makes sense to have the plan. You plan everything out. You have to know where your computer room is going to be, where all the different outlets are going to be, so that the switches can all be connected together. Now, when we go back to that video, I don't have any... I mean, I have audio, but you guys can hear the audio, but it's not important to hear the audio. I'm just going to Let me minimize that. I'm just going to play it for you and explain what's going on there. So this is one of Google's data center in South Carolina. And we're going to see it's a, like a huge, uh, a huge warehouse. And obviously a lot of security and stuff like that. Um, if you saw the building, you probably wouldn't know anything was happening in the building. It looks like an electrical installation of some sort, but that is one of their data centers. Now let's go inside the actual computer room where they have the servers and switches and everything. I'm just gonna move it quickly. All right, so this guy is gonna go in there and show us, all right, what the floor looks like, the actual data center. All right, so you can see that these are like rows and rows and stacks and stacks of servers, right? Servers and switches. You've got all your cables running around, um, you know, over, overhead or some of them in the wall. Like we said, you have to lay the cables the best way you can. So here are your, here are your server racks, right? Those um, servers or switches, like we said, they have to get stacked on top of each other. And you can see from the back that they're all kind of like daisy chained. They're connected together. So when you think about it, uh, this picture of an extended star topology is kind of like the internet. The internet is like a huge, 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 you know, extended star with all the local area networks all connected together. Um, thanks to wide area networks and stuff like that, right? So that is what, so um, just an example for you guys, rows and rows 
I mean, look at the connections there, right? You can see all the cabling, you know, going into one com one um, one device into the next device. Now, some of these computers, right? They are obviously they are servers. They're not all switches. You have servers, and these servers have actual disks. And when the disks have problems, well, you can remove the disk from inside the server, right? So just like on your computer, on your computer or in your, especially your desktop, you're going to have hard drives, right? Um, on on servers, uh, you know, you know, in a huge office complex or even a little office complex, when you have servers, you have switches. Servers are what computers that are designed as servers, right? You have hard, you have hard drives. And these hard drives can have problems, um, you know, inside the device, and they need to be fixed, just like fixing your computer. So this guy is going to destroy this uh, hard drive because it had problems, and there's a way to destroy hard drives. So you can see rows and rows and rows um, of computers and switches in a huge, huge data center. All right, so. To get the audio, go watch this, um, you know, when we're done with class. It will give you a, a great understanding of what a whole computer room setup might be like, you know, uh, an extended star, you know, in a lot of ways. So the benefits, like we said here, um, are, you know, it's easy for you to manage uh, that kind of a setup. And the extended star is sometimes referred to as the hierarchical star. So if you see the word hierarchical star in the assignment, it also refers to extended star topology. All right, so computers attached, you know, in ways that help you to extend the network. And sometimes, I think the most realistic is, you know, it may not be that they are attached in a star shape, they might just be stacked on top of each other. But the whole idea is, switch to switch, switch to switch, switch to switches, right? They spread out around an office or even just at your house. Your house is suddenly, you know, a physical star topology in the way it's designed. All right. So this was a few things we said before. The central device represents a single point of failure and having a spare or several pairs, spares are um, a great idea. A point to point topology. Uh, let's look at page. Uh, Vincent, let me have you go to page. Uh, what page is that now? Point to point. Point to point is on page one. Page 123. Now, I'm not going to I'm not going to highlight all topologies. Uh, you guys have to check out some of them, but I want to look at let's look at point to point on page 122 and 123. Do you see that, Vincent? Yes, I do. All right, so, so let's get us like a basic description here of what the point, actually, you know, let me kind of describe it to you. Um, yeah, just for time's sake. So the point to point in this diagram you see here, when you want to link two buildings, say two of, you know, two of your office buildings, they're kind of like, you know, maybe, you know, maybe a mile apart or who knows, quarter of a mile apart. And you want to connect those two buildings, right? Now, generally what happens is your internet at home, right? You share that internet with the folks around you. So it's possible that if something happens to Verizon, maybe the, the you know, Verizon station around your house, all your neighbors are going to be affected, not just you, right? So you're, sh you're basically sharing internet with everyone who has internet around you. That's, that's the reality. So it's not just dependent on just your house, right? For Verizon to bring internet to your house or to your zip code, then they're bringing that, that internet to all your neighbors as well. And, you know, what happens to a neighbor's connection 
has the potential, not always, but has the potential of affecting you. Now, in a point-to-point topology, when a company wants to avoid sort of sharing, um, in a sense, sharing internet with the neighbors, you want to have a private network between two buildings. You set up, you talk to your provider, and you set up a P2P, point-to-point kind of network between two buildings, right? Now, that point-to-point setup, it allows you to have an ex- to have exclusive use of your connection. It is not dependent in any way on the people around. It doesn't matter if there are a million people between the two buildings, right? Your your bandwidth is what we call a dedicated bandwidth. I think I have it on the next page. Uh, not here. Dedicated bandwidth. Um, Okay, okay, that's it right there. A, di- a direct link, right? A direct link between two devices. A direct link between two devices, right? Um, so we see that word, or that, I guess that um, explanation. Uh, also, Vincent, so if you look at that point to point topology on page 122, it says um, it's most often used in wide area networks in which a device on a business's network has a dedicated link, dedicated link, right? right? So your network provider, it's like, it's kind of like having, uh, I don't know, maybe I can say, I, I, I don't know, I, nothing's come to my mind now. Oh, well, think about it. When you, when you think about the HOV lane, the HOV lane on, on the highway, right? That HOV lane is exclusive to certain types of, you know, vehicles, you know, with certain number of passengers in there, right? Right. It's not for everybody. You understand? It's not for everybody. You've got to, you know, you've got to be, you know, a car with, uh, I guess, more than two people and stuff like that. So most of the time, the HOV lane is free and everybody feels like, I'm just going to get on the HOV lane and get get out of traffic. Well, God help you if the police is awake that day, right? Um, you're going to get a ticket and get into trouble. So it's kind of like, when you think about the point to point, it's kind of like creating a HOV lane between two buildings, an exclusive kind of connection for all your data, all your, it is exclusive. Now, the disadvantage is that it tells us on page 123 at the top section, it's it's expensive. It, It is pretty expensive because, um, your provider, I mean, I, I, I mean, I've done this a couple of times when I worked as a network professional, we had to link two buildings and it gave me a lot of experience, you know, just seeing the whole setup, right? Every time I talk about it, I just remember what we did with Comcast. Um, they, were, they set up a point to point between two buildings. And so all your communication with that building is exclusive. It's kind of like a private network between two buildings. Things are pretty fast. Um, there is no, there's hardly any delay. There's a lot of privacy, of course, and it is not dependent at all on what's happening with your neighbors. Absolutely not. Because right. So imagine that. Go ahead. A big building like UMass or or, or other big university doesn't use that. Oh. Well, every every organization has to make up their mind what they want to do and how much you want to spend. Right. If UMass had a campus, I mean, where we have the campus now, and let's say they happen to have another campus that is somewhere maybe in Charlestown or maybe um, near downtown Crossing, right? Okay. So if UMass had a campus in downtown Crossing, right, obviously that campus is not right there where we are right now, okay? Well, they could decide to set up a point-to-point technology to that building so that what you're experiencing technology-wise, you know, on campus will be experienced at that same, with those same guys in downtown Crossing. You have that connection. Your phone lines, your internet, everything flows through that P2P. So that is, that's, that's like, that's, you, it's like kind of creating a private, a private intranet 
a private intranet, right, between two buildings. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes. Uh, can I also understand as well, if a company has pri uh, private intranet, that, it, that means that she, uh, the company has point-to-point -point apology? It's guaranteed? No. No, okay. No. So intranet just means that, you know, only the people who are employed in that company and all that kind of stuff, right, have access. Okay. Right? But point to point is a kind of a technology set up that if you decide, look, we want to link two buildings, right? And we don't want to go through the regular internet. You know, if you want to, if you want to, maybe you want to pull up your files at the other site, then you got to go to the regular internet. If there might be delays. You want to make a phone call, you want to go through the regular telecommunications, you know, problems. You might just decide, well, we want to, we want something that's, you know, of a higher grade of communication. And so you talk to your provider and they set it up. It's a whole lot of setup. It's, it's like a real big deal, you know? I mean, it's, it's, there's a, they have to do a lot of planning. Um, they have to, and, and the connection can be wireless or it can be actual cables that run in the ground. Or, you know, yeah, I think with Comcast, they had to do some digging. They have to do some digging. So talking about cabling, let's move on a little bit from here and go to uh, two more points here. We're going to wrap this up in a couple of minutes. So the first one is what we talked about before, and that is um, logical topologies. Now, logical topology refers simply to how data travels. So if you have a switch that is turned on, so here's a turned on switch here. Uh, well, we had switches with the picture here. All right, so network switch with lights. So you have a network switch that is turned on. And obviously, every time it works, just like the, the video, right? The video, the uh, YouTube uh, data center, you can tell all the all the kit, uh, where's, where's all this? Yeah, right here. So you can see all the blinking lights. It tells you that there's activity going on between all those devices, right? They're all active. There's a lot of blinking going on. All the lights are on. All the devices are, are in operation. Well, the flow of data, we refer to that as a logical connection, just like this picture here. On the left, there's nothing happening because there's no data being transferred. So you don't see the light. To the right, you see the lights. That's what you have in this video here, right? You see the lights. The lights tell you that there's activity, logical connection. So when you think about logical connection or logical topology, you're talking about the, pre the, the activity of data flowing back and forth. Right? When data is being transferred from one device to the other device, if there is no data flowing, you say there is no logical connection, you know, or no circuit between those two devices. Right? So the idea, and that, and that um, explanation is right there on page 125, um, talking about switched Ethernet, switched, switched Ethernet topology is when data flows back and forth. Um, so the kind of technologies we're talking about, uh, we're going to come to cables in a second. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up. But the kind of technology, uh, all this wiring and all this cabling and the fact that we can do the internet, right? We can do the internet, basically, um, is all based on mostly ethernet technology. Ethernet. What's ethernet? Ethernet is right there on your control panel. We've looked at this many times. When you go into in here and you can see your Ethernet right here at the spot, or actually when you go to your adapter settings, everything here is your Ethernet. When you go to the properties, your Ethernet includes MAC addresses. Your Ethernet includes IP addresses, right? That's how data is routed around, between computers, 
that's how we have the whole idea of networking, right? We can tell what IP address and where it is, what zip code that IP address is attached to. It's all part of the Ethernet technology, right? So that Ethernet is a network technology um, along with 802.11 wireless. When we talk more about wireless, we, we, we're going to spend more time with 802.1, but you have a lot of, um, it's like a standard, 802.11, 802.12, 1.3, There's a lot of, you know, standards. It's like when you have a, a standard number, right, like a policy um, or model or serial number, something like that, right, 802.11. And then you have examples of wide area networks. Um, these are the ways that Comcast and Verizon and AT&T get data to move across the world with these various technologies here, right? Now, all these things we're talking about is all based on cabling. At the end of the day, you got to look at the cables involved in everything, physical cables. We have three main types of cables here, the UTP cable, uh, which is the cable you guys are going to be building. We talked about that, right? The cable you're going to be building on shielded twisted pair. That's the kind of cable we're going to be building. Then you have, and this is a picture of it, right? You have it behind your desktop computer, maybe somewhere lying around in your house. That's what the cable looks like. It's four pairs um, made of copper on the inside. Then the next uh, cable type is a fiber optic cable. The fiber optic cable, somebody said it looks like a, um, a punk star. You know, the hair of a punk star, all spiky and stuff. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but that's a fiber optic. And then you have your um, coaxial cable, right? Um, Will, what is this cable used for? You should have, I don't know if you have this around your house. But well, this is a common cable. Um, Will? I, I know I have like five of these in my house, but I can't remember what they're for. Is it something to do with like audio? It might have to do with audio, like the connection at the top, right? Where you screw that part at the very top. Yeah. Uh, it might be for your audio. It might be for your internet. It's just the design that helps you screw it to the back of that, um, of that pin. So that pin there might be like your TV or something, right? But the, co the coaxial cable itself, that's mostly with TVs and cable service, right? Um, but the whole idea of, you know, of the internet that we have, uh, there's a word we're going to look at, that's the word broadband, right? Broadband, you know, the fact that you can, you can, stream, you can stream movies, you can get on your phone, you can download, you know, stuff, you can talk. All that activity is all based on signals. If you have broadband service, which, you know, uh, people have, you have broadband service, then you can, you know, you can basically operate on, you know, you can operate the way you operate your internet. Your internet has the ability to move multiple signals simultaneously, right? Voice video, data, audio, simultaneous, that's all broadband. And we're going to see, you know, the role that these cables play in all this idea here, right? Uh, the cable you're going to be buying for your project and building your project is the unshielded twisted pair. When you go and buy that cable, you're going to see that the unshield, uns, unshielded twisted pair, uh, let me say, cable label when you go and buy that buy that cable you're going to see something here this is the last thing i'm going to talk about uh let me see if you guys can see this part here all right right here uh sindhu do you see this picture here yeah so when you, when you get the cable, it's going to say category, you know, it can be called category or CAT, C-A-T, right? Category 5E e or 5 or 6. We're going to see, when we talk about this uh, later, 
that the cables have different categories that, that determine their efficiency. All right, so you don't just get any cable that looks like a cable, like looks like the right thing. It has different specifications to do the job we want it to do. All right, so usually it's gonna be category five, category five E or category six. And we're gonna take a look on Thursday at exactly what those guys do, the different categories. All right, so. Professor, it's, um, it's totally fine if I buy is already come with the RJ thing and then I can just cut it, right? And then put it again. That's the only way the cable, you, you're gonna get it like, anyway. Just get just buy it like that, exactly like that. I think I said that before, cut off the ends and then you now start to rebuild it. Okay. That's okay. the only way you could get it. Except I, you're I, buying for industrial use for a whole building, you're not gonna get it without the RJ45. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. All right, uh, that's all I got. Let me stop the recording and let's do the attendance.